Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about something that is extremely important and that is your joy. Why is it that there are so many Christians out there who are angry, stressed, grumpy, complainers, some look depressed all the time? Where is your joy? I'm not asking this just so you sit and wait until you continue the video. I'm really asking you to do some self-reflection here today. Where is your joy? I know you might worry about your country, the government, inflation, work, children, your marriage, your health and so many other issues. You know, we humans are actually something very strange because we get used to a certain type of lifestyle, right? And then we get so used to it that we don't appreciate it anymore. Think about it. In the time of the Bible, they couldn't make nice hot coffee for themselves in the morning, you know? They couldn't have hot showers. Those kind of things, warm baths were probably only for the kings. A microwave. <laughs> Small things that are amazing today that we take for granted. And then when it comes to the ups and downs of life that we all experience, the downs, those difficult situations in your life, most of us, the things that we experience, those downs, it cannot even begin to compare to what the apostles had to go through, all the pain and suffering they had to endure. And yet, they still had peace and joy. And we don't. For example, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 11, I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spend a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger of bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. You see, we cannot think for a moment that we are going through certain things that other humans are not going through. We all go through trials and tribulations, pain and suffering. Most of the disciples suffered and they died horrible deaths. Killed for their faith. One of them hung upside down, the other bun boiled, the other killed with the sword. And yet, they had peace and joy. How is it that they are able to have joy and peace and we are not? Psalm 16 verse 11 says, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. You see, you will always have difficult times. When one is gone, the next is around the corner. But while you go through those tough times, you can still have true joy in Christ Jesus. Because you're, you see, your aim is not like the rest of the world who try to run after pleasure, temporary happiness. Jesus doesn't talk about temporary happiness. He talks about having true joy and peace in Him. That's different. He said in John 15 verse 11, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. Wow. He didn't say, let your joy sometimes be full or let your joy be 70%, 80%, 90%.
90%, read it with me again. That my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. You see, the apostles saw the bigger picture and they were content with whatever God allowed in their lives, the things they had to endure because they understood with seeing the big picture that all things, the ups and the downs, they all work together for those who are called according to His purpose. And you know, they also understood that the temporary suffering, the temporary hardships cannot even begin to compare to the eternal glory. Paul said in Romans 8 verse 18, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. And you know, they also understood that the temporary hardships, they are necessary to build our faith, our character, so that we can grow in Christ. And that will help us not only to overcome more obstacles and problems in our life because we have full trust and faith in Jesus Christ. We understand scripture. We know now how to deal with things as mature Christians. Not only that, but it also enables us, equips us better to save more souls for Christ. And living this way, having peace, full joy and peace, even in the worst of situations, people of this world cannot begin to understand it because it surpasses all understanding. How is this person to have peace and joy? Why is their light still shining after everything she endured, he endured? James 1 verse 2 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And Romans 5 verse 3 says, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And they also understood that just like the seasons that come and go, spring is around the corner after winter. So this hardship that they're dealing with, this too will pass. They, they weren't so focused on their problems. They looked through the problems to Jesus Christ because their trust was in Him. And they knew after suffering for a little while, God will help them. Peter said in 1 Peter 5 verse 10, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to His eternal glory in Christ, will Himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. So, let me ask you again. Where is your joy? Think about it. Do some self-reflection. Try to answer it. Who took it from you? Was it your family, your work, friends, politics, the news, your past maybe? Or is it just you? Do you steal your own joy because of the thoughts you allow into your head? We have to take every thought captive and bring it under the obedience of Jesus Christ. You need to think about the things He wants you to think about and focus on. And who is really behind it? Stealing your joy, keeping you distracted on the things you shouldn't be focused on. Maybe the devil. Jesus said in John 16 verse 33, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. You see, nothing in this temporary world actually matters because when you die, where are you going? A lot of people, when they come to the end of their lives on their deathbed, they look back and they regret a lot of the things that stole their time. We need to focus on the right things and remember that Jesus already overcame this world. He is victorious and we are also victorious through Him. That's why I have this merch on today. And you know, a lot of people lose their joy because they are not content with their financial situation or their possessions. 
because they are too focused on this temporary world that is not our home. You are but a vapor. The one day you're here, the next you are gone. You're not taking any of your possessions with you. Nothing. Hebrews 13 verse 5 says, Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Maybe you're in this situation, not having joy, because you are not content with the hardships that God is allowing in your life. So you're not passing the test. And if you're not passing the test, he will keep you in that situation until you pass the test. And like I said before, don't think that what you experience that no one else in the world, other humans do not experience the same kind of thing. God tests people with different type of things. For example, to the one person, he might give a lot of money to test how they're gonna handle that money. With other people, almost no money to test if they're content with that. Other people, he might influence their health. Other people might not have children and they really want children, but they need to give it up. People will go through different trials. 1 Peter 4 verse 12 says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. You see, this is the test between those who say that they are Christians, but who are not really Christians and those who are true Christians. Because you see, only true reborn Christians with God's Spirit in them will endure until the end. Why? Because they have the Holy Spirit in them. They've been changed. They're new creations. Their minds been re renewed. They focus on God and they learn to be content and bring everything under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 10, For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You see, if you are in Christ, like Paul, like the apostles, then you have no reason not to have joy. Because if you're in Christ, it means you abide in Him and He in you. And that joy is supernaturally produced. Not by yourself. It's not this worldly happiness. It is a supernatural joy and peace that's produced by God Himself. John 15, I am the true vine and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, He takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Now here he comes, listen carefully. Verse 4, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. And you all know the fruit of the Holy Spirit. One of it is joy. And then it says, for apart from me, you can do nothing. And then it is after this explanation of explaining what it means to truly abide in Him that He says the following well-known verse. Verse 11, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. Now God gave you a self-determining will to make your own decisions, because He wants you to make the right decisions out of your own free will. And the most important thing you need to understand is that your head is like a switch. You decide if you're going to open the tap, click on that switch for the truth of the Spirit to come in and flow through you or the flesh with lies. And so you need to decide yourself 
whether or not you are always going to have complete, full joy in Christ no matter what. Philippians 4 verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. It doesn't say sometimes. It doesn't say give into your feelings. No, I am angry. The Bible talks about angry. No, it talks about righteous anger. And that's different. You can still have peace and joy in you even though you, are, you have righteous anger against certain sin. Too many Christians live like the world and say, well, I just feel like it, so I'm just going to feel this way. I need to vent a little bit. I need to be angry for it. Just leave me alone. And they go on this tantrum trip for a few hours instead of immediately rejecting those fleshly nature, those ideas, those lies and say, no, I'm not going to let this influence me. I am going to choose to have my joy in Christ and nothing is going to steal it because Philippians 4 verse 4 says, rejoice always. And then it says, again, I will say, rejoice. So here it doesn't ask you to do it. It's a command. It says that you have to rejoice in the Lord always. So you can't go according to your feelings. You can't victimize yourself and be unhappy and say, oh, poor me. This is wrong and this is wrong and this is wrong. No, the true Christian life. It's a life of joy and peace to have life abundantly and to bring all the thoughts captive and bring it under the obedience of Jesus Christ. So if something there in your thoughts, the things that you're thinking is not in line with scripture, you push it out. It doesn't matter what people say, what cultures say, what modern times say. It doesn't matter. You follow Christ. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. You know, I've heard conversations where Christians speak and the one say, this is wrong and this is wrong, this is wrong. And the other person say, well, just trust God. And then that person replies and says, well, I do trust God, but da, 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 da. well, no. If you have a but, it means you don't trust God, not fully. If you truly, and I mean truly, have complete trust in Jesus Christ with what He allows in your life, then you will always have peace and joy. So choose to trust His plan for your life over what you think is best for your life. And then choose to truly have joy in the Lord Jesus Christ every day. Psalm 118 verse 24 says, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is time for a lot of Christians to stand up. So stand up, Christian. That is your new identity. You're not Susan, Peter, John. You are a Christian. Because your life now is Christ, Christ Christian. We don't live anymore, right? We denied ourselves, we pick up our cross, we follow Jesus, we died with Him. We raised as new creations in Christ. And that is why we are Christians. So do not let anyone steal your joy that you have in Jesus Christ. The moment it happens, when you let it happen, you need to go to God and say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for stepping out of the rest that you give me, that I started to worry and have anxiety, that I lost my peace and joy in you. I am now stepping back in the rest that you are giving me. <sighs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, watch this video here if you want to know more about how you can always have peace in Christ. I'll see you there. Remember to subscribe and never forget that life is short. So please do not waste yours. Have life and have it abundantly. Bye, guys.